нас там сосед, он пьяный. Он, короче, стучится на дверь, всю ломает нафиг. Он уже несколько минут здесь стоит, стучится, а вот матерится. Я просто мне страшно. Remember the terrifying scene from The Shining? Imagine this happening in real life. And imagine being a defenseless kid having to deal with this. Папа ушел в магазин. Я не знаю, что делать, короче. Он сначала прям долбился, будто ногой. А теперь вот, долбиться. Долбиться, это прям слышно. Это очень жестко слышно. This is nine-year-old Felicia Kononchuk. She was a sweet little girl who had painted a heart on her face. She loved her family and she loved her TikTok friends. In a shocking twist, she took to live TikTok for some comfort as her crazed neighbor was trying to break into her home. Felicia's TikTok followers, most of them children, watched helplessly as she was killed by 33-year-old Vasily Dunitz. It's simply horrifying, and it makes you think just how fleeting life is. Felicia Kononchuk was born in Chita City, Russia in 2011 to parents Alina and Fyodor. She grew up with Fyodor and two brothers, one five years older and one five years younger than her. Felicia didn't have a bad bone in her body. Her mother remembers she was so cheerful, bright, and never held a grudge. In many ways, Felicia was the quintessential girly girl. She loved pink, flowers, and unicorns and did very well in school. Felicia grew up in Chita, which is a pretty big city of around 350,000 people, close to the Mongolian border. And in that part of Russia, big cities are pretty scarce. Chita is far away from the other bustling towns. But Felicia felt close to the whole world through her TikTok account. Felicia didn't have millions of followers, but she had friends her age following her from all around the country. That way she felt connected to her whole generation, something she definitely couldn't do just by playing with her few schoolmates. Her family encouraged her to pursue all her passions. She was a kind and loving girl, and Fyodor never saw any danger in Felicia talking to TikTok. He was right. The danger wasn't lurking on the internet. It was right next door. On the afternoon of February 17th, 2021, Felicia was at home, but her parents weren't. She was with her two brothers and a maintenance team who was doing some work in the living room. But as she heard some terrifying noises coming from the hall of her apartment block, she decided to record herself on TikTok Live. That way she could directly address her friends and ask for help, or at least seek some comfort. <laughs> Он, короче, стучится на дверь, всю ломает нафиг. Он уже несколько минут здесь стоит, стучится, а вот матерится. Я просто мне страшно. Блин. Он вообще... Нам... Мне страшно. Я с братом младшим, старшим, и там еще ремонт делают. Папа ушел в магазин. Я не знаю, что делать, короче. Он просто... Нам сейчас дверь сломает. Уже есть просто капец. Мне очень страшно, у меня сердце бьется. Я боюсь, у меня просто... Теперь он... Он сначала прям долбился, будто ногой. А теперь... Вот, долбиться. Долбиться, это прям слышно. Это очень жестко слышно. Чё его... У меня просто башка раскалывается. Imagine how scary this must have been for Felicia. Hearing your drunk neighbor try to break the door down is scary to anyone, let alone a nine-year-old girl. Felicia continued to record for about an hour. <laughs> You can even hear Felicia's little brother whimpering in the background, growing more and more scared by the minute. Скажу вам по-честному, он уже один час где-то стоит ступить, я уже, блядь, сердце страшно, жестко, это жестко. Мой брат, короче, спрятался и все. Sadly, this wasn't the first time Felicia's neighbor was putting her life in danger. This was 33-year-old Vasily Dunitz, who 
worked at a household supply store and had a long history of drunken violence and irrational behavior. In the past, he'd had several unpleasant encounters with Felicia's dad. This time, he was annoyed at the noise made by the family's renovation team. He'd already harassed Felicia and her brothers in the morning about the noise. Fyodor had been very clear about boundaries, and he had had an argument with Valsi before he'd left to go grocery shopping. But Vasily was so angered that he waited for Fyodor to leave in order to terrorize his children some more. If Fyodor had stayed home, he wouldn't have tried to break into the apartment. Vasily banged on Felicia's door and shouted obscene insults for close to an hour, but it all seemed to dial down toward the end of her video. In fact, Felicia was almost certain he'd got bored of attacking the door. After her TikTok recordings, Felicia messaged some of her local friends, telling them about the distressing situation and asking for advice. One of her friends offered her to come to her place and take her for a walk, just until Fyodor returned home and handled the situation with Vasily, who seemed to have retreated to his apartment. So as she thought Vasily got bored of trying to break in, Felicia quietly waited for her dad to come home and for her friend to knock on her door so that they could go walk in the local park. Minutes before Fyodor got home, Felicia heard a knock. She thought it must be her friend. She eagerly went to open the door, but when she did, her blood froze. It was none other than Vasily. This time, he was armed with a hunting rifle. Frantic Felicia closed the door, but Vasily fired through the door, making perfect holes in it. The bullets reached Felicia's head. She lived just long enough to see her dad one last time. This is the horrible scene that Felicia's father found when he got home. He remembered, I ran into the corridor and saw my daughter covered in blood. She croaked, Dad, I've been killed. I took her in my arms and shouted to my son and the repair workers to call an ambulance. Fyodor's oldest son called the emergency services as fast as he could, but they were one minute too late. <laughs> my daughter died in my arms. When the ambulance arrived, I carried her to them, but the doctor said that she had no chance to survive. Felicia had been shot in the head with a 12 caliber hunting rifle. It was a miracle she lived long enough to say goodbye to her father. Vasily Dunitz was arrested on the spot. He didn't even attempt to flee his apartment after killing Felicia. The question remains, why didn't the maintenance workers try to convince Vasily to back off. He pounded at Felicia's door for close to an hour, cursing and trying to bring the door down. Did the workers really not take his threats seriously? Or were they too afraid to confront him, worried that he had a gun? In the end, he really did have a gun, and poor Felicia stood right in its way. But with the maintenance workers in the apartment and Felicia recording two TikTok videos discussing at length her fears, the case was truly heartbreaking. It seems like there were many opportunities to avoid this, yet no one realized the actual danger and called the police before it was too late. Following Felicia's heartbreaking death, her father went on TikTok posting his daughter's final two videos in March 2021, then posting a video of the crime scene and another one from his home, crying over the loss of his only daughter. Indeed, it made no sense to go through what he did. It was downright shocking and impossible to forgive or forget. Did Vasily really feel warranted in harassing children over a noise complaint? How could killing a child make up for a few hours of maintenance noise? Being drunk is not an excuse. Vasily was a violent, real-life monster, and his alcoholism just emphasized his horrible behavior. Fyodor's last TikTok video showed Vasily behind bars, waiting for his trial. People commented sharing their sympathy for Fyodor. Others complained that Fyodor wouldn't get a life sentence as the usual sentence for murder in Russia is just 10 years. Fyodor posted one last video showing him and his four-year-old son at Felicia's funeral. Eventually, Vasily Dunitz was sentenced to 17 years in a strict regime penal colony in Siberia. It's harrowing to think that he'll be released at the age of 50. Will prison correct his behavior or will he become even more violent and desensitized to crime by the time he gets out? At the moment, Fyodor is trying to appeal Vasily's sentence and demand a longer prison term. He commented, he deserves at least 20 years. I just want that man to realize what he did. Sadly, this wasn't the first time a child lost her life 
minutes after recording a scary TikTok video, just two months before Felicia fell victim to her sociopathic neighbor. 16-year-old Kalicia Williams was invited to an Airbnb party in Atlanta, Georgia. It was December 2020, and Kalicia had spent most of that year locked at home with her parents. So when she received the party invitation, they encouraged her to go. It was an opportunity to get out of the house and enjoy some time with her friends. She's supposed to be at an Airbnb with a couple of more friends from school and the mother. They'd have done this once before, so we was a little comfortable of letting her go the second time. And we spoke to the mother, and she said she was going to be there. Yeah, there was a mother chaperoning the party, so Clecia's parents thought there was nothing to worry about. There would be a pair of adult eyes watching on as the night unfolded, and the teens wouldn't be allowed any illegal substances. Clecia's parents never thought something much more dangerous than could happen that night. At two minutes past midnight, Kalicia recorded her very last TikTok video. She is seen dancing to a tune and having a great time in one of the Airbnb rooms. Suddenly, someone enters her room unannounced. She looks shocked, and then the video stops. A few minutes later, shots were heard by other party guests from the living room. Two of Kalicia's friends found her on the floor in a pool of blood. They carried her to the elevator and out of the building while someone else called the police. It turns out there had already been a disturbance that night at the Hyatt Regency. Sometime after midnight, Kalicia was pronounced dead at the local hospital. Outrageously, her family did not hear about the murder until eight hours later. The chaperoning mother was trying to hide the horrible ordeal from them. Kalicia's parents had even phoned the mother to ask about her well-being after she hadn't come home. And the mother didn't mention the fact that she was dead. The hotel room was in her name, so I feel like she should be held accountable for my daughter's death as well. They didn't learn the group was staying at a Hyatt Regency until they received a horrific call the next day. Like, this is the morgue. And I was like, the morgue? They was like, yes, ma'am. They was like, well, we're waiting on your daughter's body to come through. I'm like, whoa. It was just a lot of foul play, and I'm just trying to put all the pieces together because I don't feel like the system is doing enough work to help me. The police eventually arrested Kalicia's killer, a teenage boy she knew. What she didn't know was that he had a gun on him and an extremely short temper. She lost her life senselessly to yet another sociopathic, violent person who can't control their temper. Just like Felicia suffered at the hands of her crazy neighbor. It's not right to know we live in a world where things like this can happen. Children should be safe from harm, and they should be especially safe from evil men with guns. But oftentimes, it is particularly young girls, the most vulnerable category, who fall victim to these terrifying people. And it's all made even creepier when they leave a TikTok video testifying to their last moments spent in fear, panic, and helplessness. Thanks for watching, you guys. What do you think about this case? Do you know of other crazy TikTok murder cases? Let me know in the comment section, and before you go, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. See you next time, and keep yourself safe.